Hi, I'm Andrew Billings. Welcome to Formation. Today, I'm here with my good friend Joshua Mills, and we're going to be talking about stewarding family in ministry. So glad to have you here today, and thank you so much for joining me here. Hey, thanks for having me. Joshua and I have known each other for quite some time, several, mm -hmm. many years, and wow. we've watched each other walk through seasons. Right. <laughs> and one of the beautiful things that I really admire about you and your ministry and your work with God, Joshua, is that your ministry is not exclusive with your family. Hmm. It's not exclusive of your family. You've invited right. your family as an integral part of your ministry expression. And so, you know, let's talk about this because I think we both hold the same value system. Sure. That the whole idea of the man or the woman of God that goes off and kind of sacrifices the family. Mm-hmm for the sake of the gospel. I think that's so sad. It's so tragic. Because everything about God is about family. I mean, even when you think about, you know, God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, the reason why he sowed the seed of Jesus into the earth is because he wanted a family so good. of sons and daughters. And so um, I think that that old ministry model of going off and and sacrificing your children, sacrificing your marriage relationship. Right. All of that is, I think we realize now, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, And I think we should be able to learn from history and realize that's not something that works. And it's actually not something that God asked of us. Um, God gave us a family. These are the ones that God gave to us. So good. And we're to care for the ones that God has given to us. Mm. And so the way that, both Janet and I have looked at life and ministry is family is our first ministry. And so if, if I can't minister to my family, then I really don't have any business ministering to other people. Absolutely. Um, if it doesn't work at home, why would it work in the rest of the world? And that's it. I mean, you think about even like the church, um, the role of a pastor, Mm. as shepherd um in many ways it's it's a father i think it's yeah. interesting you know in the catholic church they called the priest the father but in so many ways the role of a pastor is a fathering role it is and if you can't father in your home then how can you father tens hundreds thousands of people in a big uh corporate setting right and so um yeah, I think God's God's teaching all of us how to lead mm. our families, right? How to lead in a family, mm. and how to um, how to be family, how to be family. Yeah, yeah. And and I just find it so fascinating because I I, I really like to step back and look at the details mm. of God because a true artist or a true architect they don't necessarily always explain why they're doing something. <laughs> That's true. They just roll things out. They're not necessarily mm -hmm. giving a narration. Mm -hmm. And so you see this whole idea of like, well, ministry, ministry, ministry. Well, hang on, let's roll back a little bit. Because we know that the, the modern church was birthed in Acts chapter 2. Right. You know, obviously seeded and prequeled by what Jesus modeled mm -hmm. during his three and a half years of ministry. Sure. And then his family stewardship. But then you can go back and you can see the the new the, the uh, old testament or the the mosaic covenant and you can see you know essentially the temple being birthed but then you go all the way back to the beginning in the garden and the first institution you see getting birthed is marriage which leads to family right and so we're talking thousands of years prior to a religious institution being blessed and mm -hmm. condoned and launched really by god He's, he's, he's launching the institution infrastructure of a family because healthy families create healthy communities. So true. Which build healthy nations. And I think the same is true in our time. And, you know, I, I just kind of scroll through the, the timeline of the scriptures and, and the, really the history of the, of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And you see Jesus and you see this amazingly beautiful relationship where you see, in a, another again in a family context, he's literally just modeling everything from the father. And you can see this powerfully endearing relationship, father-son relationship, like everything I do 
I've seen him do. Right. And everything I, love I that. say, he's he's already shown me. I love that. Nathaniel, I saw you before I ever saw you. Mm-hmm. You know, and you see this, and you know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so there's this beautiful, it's like God's not trying to roll out in Genesis, like I am the king of all things. He's <laughs> like, no, I'm the one that made this. I, I'm the creator, I crafted right. you. And so coming back to this whole idea, that ministry becomes this, and I honestly think it's just an orphan spirit that found power, sure. that has an ambition to be seen as a powerful minister, but at the sake of like gaining the whole world and losing your own family is mm. a powerful, like not a powerful, but it's a it's a devastating cost mm-hmm. to see children and grandchildren or or even marriages pay a price ultimately of right maybe even walking away from god or falling yeah. apart as a family it doesn't have to be that way and it shouldn't be that it way it doesn't um going back to genesis that you mentioned you know the very first command that we were given is be fruitful and multiply come on and god's idea of multiplication is growing family that's what it's so all good. about just building the kingdom through family relationship and so if we're not doing family then we're not really doing ministry We've we're not the really, foundation yeah, of what he was trying we're not to build. doing what he asked us to do mm. and um i think you know the whole the whole thing about sacrificing family for ministry something that's so gross and disgusting is an addiction to ministry yes. apart from being addicted to jesus yes. and really Which is different that's a completely right? different totally category. different yeah. and being yielded to him and you know everything about ministry should be yielded surrender right walking in obedience right doing uh, like you mentioned you know jesus said i only do what i see the father do i only yeah. say what i hear the father speaking and right. so in so many ways doing ministry right means just doing what God is doing. Yeah. And God is all about building family. Right. You know, I I think that in a lot of cases in our zeal as a culture and the hist- maybe the, the recent history of the church, we, we'll take things out of context. So mm. like, for instance, when Jesus withdrew and went and sought the Father by himself, he'd get up early before anyone was awake, Peter's still snoring, you know, sure. soaring logs, and Jesus mm-hmm. is going out to a quiet place. Or, you know, the whole idea of him being drawn out to a desert. But then we miss the idea, thinking that solitude and going it alone is somehow successful Mm. ministry. Now that's the birthplace of intimacy that puts fuel in the vehicle of ministry. Sure. But actually ministry looks like Jesus inviting this redneck crew Mm -hmm. of honestly a very diverse group of people Mm -hmm. into his proximity and which is, that's the whole thing I was talking to you about before the podcast, is that like, I just really feel like God's calling the bride back to a place of authentic community discipleship. And then discipleship uh, uh, ministry looks like, hey, Jesus is breaking the bread, he's Mm -hmm. breaking the fishes, he's lifting them up to heaven. And then the disciples are working with him, which is family, Mm -hmm. being called into working together. And you can even see the same value system at the cross. Jesus is making sure his mother's taken care of. Mm-hmm. And so there's this beautiful synergy of an ecosystem that is working. It's not about Jesus going it alone. That's it. We need the intimacy from what we find alone. Yeah. But then we come back and we lead, inviting those around us, which has to primarily mm-hmm. first be our family, into that expression. Yeah, together. Yes. I love that word together. I love that you you mentioned that because the old style of ministry is the man of God, Mm -hmm. the celebrity Mm -hmm. that has all the power and can do all the miracles, has all the prophetic words. But the true model of ministry that was set for us is the body of Christ, that we need each other. I love the fivefold ministry. I love... um, the the dynamics of it the way that it looks the way right. that it, and and i don't think there's a lot of people modeling it right in the earth but i think if if we can really realize that together we're better together we demonstrate what it looks like for jesus to walk in the earth right so one has a word another has a different gift some move in power um others teach others are able to lead with that father's heart but then together it's like you just see god and something that janet and i started doing in our family is 
you know, I preach a lot of different places around the world. And over this last year, we, we said, hey, we, we want to be able to all travel together. And so there's been different seasons in our life where, you know, our girls, they're young. Uh, my daughter Legacy is turning nine this week. My daughter Liberty is going to be 13 years old this year. Crazy. My son Lincoln is 22. He's in university, Oral Roberts University in Tulsa. And, um, and there's been different seasons in our life where sometimes they're in Christian schools at home. Mm. Other times they've traveled with us on the road. Mm. But this last year we're like, hey, we want the girls to be with us. And we, we just want to really be able to go into the nations together. Anyway, with all that said, on, while we're driving to the meetings, I'll say, hey, everybody pray in the spirit. And Come so on. we all get praying in the spirit. If Lincoln's with us, he'll pray in the spirit. My daughters will pray in the spirit. We'll all be praying in the spirit. And then I'll say, okay, if God gives you something, I want to know what it is, whether it's a word, whether it's right. a picture. Right. Whatever God gives you, just share it. And so it's amazing. It never fails. At some point, as we're praying in the spirit, uh, the kids will either see a picture, they'll get a word. Right. Sometimes they'll get words of knowledge for things that are going to happen in the meetings. But whatever it is, I want to open up and hear. As a father, I want to hear. Yeah. Because I recognize that together as a family, there can be a fuller dynamic. Right a more powerful expression of the glory mm. in the public setting mm. if we work together together as a family so good. and it never fails um when god gives those words you know at some point in the meeting i'll make room for maybe the girls to share or i'll share something that the girls have seen and then they'll be able to speak into it more or lincoln will get up and he'll share words of knowledge that the lord has given him and miracles happen wow. and the demonstration of the spirit is evident and mm -hmm. people get saved people get delivered i remember last year we were in las vegas and lincoln got this word of knowledge about three people being delivered from a smoking addiction and two hands shot up immediately in the meeting when that was called wow. out but then the third hand was lifted and it was one of the uh volunteers who was part of the ministry and yeah. nobody knew that this woman had a struggle with smoking yeah she had hit it and that's a lot of perfume <laughs> right right i i guess so i don't i don't know how you hide that but yeah. she had hidden it and nobody knew and but that word of knowledge cut through because yeah. it was three one two came immediately but then that third hand shot up mm -hmm. and it was like this is, it was, I mean, it was just it's powerful. Amazing. And Those she got totally moments. delivered yeah. of that thing that she had held on to for so long. But that was in the dynamics of family ministry. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like, I think that there's just this idea, you know, that I, I don't know. I don't know how it started, but somehow it started when Jesus clearly, he had this beautiful model that, yeah, while they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he did go slightly. It's a stone's throw but not out of sight. Mm -hmm. So he, everything he did from a, because really those guys, those disciples became family to him. They, sure. they walked together, they lived together, they, they got accommodations together, they mm -hmm. traveled, you know. And so you can see this whole, like, it's really a beautiful picture to me that while he was slightly in his own space, they were seeing, I mean, they started sleeping, mm -hmm. but they were seeing what he was modeling. Yeah. And you know, th there's just beautiful moments there. It's like for, for our family, one of the things that we've done, I think there's a place to seek God by yourself. But what does it look like seeking God as a family? Like you're mm -hmm. driving to, to services and meetings mm -hmm. and seeking God. So one of the things that my wife and I started three, four years ago with our three boys. Now, currently, our my oldest, Benjamin, is, is 10. That's hard for me to believe. I remember boys, when he was born. You came, wow. You were the first person wow. that actually came into the Nico wow. uh, unit because our the twins, twins yeah. were born a couple of days early, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, super healthy. But um, they're, they're now eight, Jonathan and Joel. Wow. So the last four or five years, it's about four years. I think it's about four years. We've had them every morning. We sit around the dining table and we pray in the spirit for like 40 minutes. Yes. And That's amazing. It is amazing to have to watch how they have grown mm -hmm. and what that has birthed in their lives. Mm -hmm. So rather than just seeing mum and dad pray like that, they're invited to a seat at, literally at the table. And the prophetic dreams, hearing the Lord, oh, visions yeah. that have birthed out of these Absolutely. kids. Absolutely. And you should see the way these kids pray now. 
the way mm-hmm. they pray is like the ferocity. Now I still understand, you know, from a personal development that they're still growing and developing, but the spirit in someone is not dictated by the age of their body. Mm-hmm. And you can just see a seasoning maturing that's developing on these kids where they're, they're partnering with the spirit now. They're not just riding along with mom right. and dad. And it's that right there where they feel, and what we've got is we'll have meetings and services and they have the liberty to walk up to me in a service and you know i'll sometimes see the spirit touching them and i'll be like are you getting something and they'll walk Mm -hmm. up and literally share something and like you said exactly the same it will bring freedom but it invites them into the story of god right of the ministry that the family's stewarding so rather than well we have to wait till dad's done Right. We have to, you know, we're just right. riding along because we have to, because mm-hmm. that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Now they're being invested in where they feel like they're of value to God. Right. And they're finding their purpose and identity, the expression of their identity, rather, yeah. inside of what we do as a family. And that's mm-hmm. powerful. So powerful. It's powerful. I, I love that you set that time apart for praying in the Spirit because you're developing their capacity to not only press in, but also to receive yes. new things from the Lord. And yes. I love that, you know, something that Billy Brim told me a few years ago, she said, tongues is the entrance into every other gift of the Spirit. Wow. And so That's I true. think it's amazing, you know, getting your kids to just pray, press into the Spirit. Yeah. And there's something also about that childlike faith yes. that, like you said, you know, when they are in the meeting and they're able to stand up and yes. step in and give a word or share a vision or whatever there's something about that modeling for the rest of the body of you know we don't have to be so sophisticated and we don't even have to have all the the pieces and parts understand it all we just have to give whatever god's giving to us right and then he adds to it and oftentimes there's another thing that happens with our family you know one will get a picture another will get a word but then as it starts to come together you see more of a wholeness of what God's speaking or what he's trying to relate. That's so good. It's It really, for me, almost paints that apostolic fivefold picture mm-hmm. where, you know, if you just have a prophet leading, then you lack the compassion and nurture that you get from <laughs> right? a pastor. Right. You know, if you just have, you know, a teacher, then mm-hmm. there's just an emphasis on knowledge transfer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, or, or really of any of those right. types of evangelists. And so... The, the beautiful part about a family is like you can see that the, the, the function and the, the nourishment to the family that a father and mother brings. Right. But sometimes we leave it there. When we mm-hmm. invite the children to sit at that table, you almost see a completion. You really do see a completion yeah. of function and culture and a groundedness and expression. Right. And it's that, that's a powerful point that you just raised. There. I, I really love that. And, you know, I think too often we're telling our children what to do not showing Mm -hmm. them what to do and when we invite them into that rather than them like when i was a kid my dad would travel overseas for business and so you think you know what he's doing but really it's just your imagination that interprets what you think he's gone Mm -hmm. to do and he goes and then he comes back and you've got an idea of what's happening right but if you get invited to come to that trip you not only see it, but you start to learn what he's doing. I think it's great. No, I, I totally agree with that, though, about, you know, you think you know what somebody's doing, but it's not yeah. until you're there to see it that you yeah. actually. Yeah. And I think just the ability of like, you know, we've started taking kids. They're old enough now where we can start mm-hmm. taking them on trips. And we, we obviously they're at an age where we'll really, you know, we'll weave in some really fun things and events around that so right. there has to be reward for what they're doing yeah. from that point of view family totally fun. kids kids don't want to just do ministry the whole time they want to have fun they want to do family they want to go have chicken nuggets you know <laughs> they want to yeah but you know what i think it was mother Teresa said if you want to change the world go home and love your family oh, absolutely and that's it's a, like great sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do yeah is just be with your family loving the ones that god has given to you so good doing fun things and just letting them realize life can be fun in the glory life can be fun as a christian i think one of the things we struggled with as children and you know i don't blame my parents or any of that because they did the best that they knew but the old model was 
you have to go through rigid routine and you, you can't make any room for fun because if you do, then you're not doing the Lord's work. That's true. It's a poverty mentality, really. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so actually something that my parents have told me, which I think is amazing, is they said, Joshua, you taught us how to have fun. Oh, that's beautiful. Because it was as we got older and Janet and I started modeling and realizing, you know, we work hard, but then we also play hard. Have to play hard. And we, we, I mean, we are diligent about doing the Father's business. Yeah. But we also realized, listen, he created the Sabbath and he told us to rest. He told us to rest because if we don't rest, mm -hmm. then we're not going to have the strength to continue to flourish and do what he's called us to do. So good. And so we, we take time to rest and refresh and play. Yeah. But then we also utilize that to bring us into the next next thing that he has for us. Yeah, that's that's really good. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the whole idea of your children seeing you modeling, having a measured paced life. So right. you either don't burn out or become yes. disorientated or disillusioned, where that's there's it. actually a grounding of hey, we mm -hmm. do fun, we have community, we rest together, we stop and check mm -hmm. on each other. Right. But then from that place, we can go out and see lives change, like the story that you just, the, the, right. the testimony you just shared about those, yeah. the word of knowledge came from one of your kids totally. and three people got, you know, mm -hmm. they said Delivered, God, totally yeah, delivered. Yeah, delivered, set me free mm -hmm. from, well, not set me free, we <laughs> <laughs> where did that, <laughs> I got Hyman and Xander, we're just, <laughs> we're just making up a smoking story here <laughs> for a little bit of clout. <laughs> yeah it's, it, like moments like that where we can see you know your children had an impact where mm -hmm. a word of knowledge came from them that then all of a sudden three people got set free like we had um one of our little kids it was about two years ago one of our one of the twins friends broke their ankle yeah and they're literally getting wheeled around in like a stroller like it's a growing kid it's not mm -hmm. a toddler anymore right a growing kid they're getting wheeled around in a stroller because their their foot's so you know their ankle's so damaged the kids go to the front door because this is what this is how they watch us live we contend right. for miracles yes we contend for healing because it's what jesus it's a lifestyle. modeled to us it's a lifestyle mm -hmm. so they go to the front door their mum's dropping something off kids in the stroller they go pray on him and i think it was in within one to two days that kid's walking amazing healed now, what does that do to the psychology of a child? Rather than just let daddy do it, let mummy do it, because they're the right. growing ups. Like, are we really reducing Holy Spirit to just adults? Mm -hmm. And so they're seeing that, and now they're stepping into it. it builds confidence it builds in the confidence. spirit. And I remember mm -hmm. just looking at their face, there was so much innocent, pure pride there. And mm -hmm. I mean that in the most wholesome right. way, where they just started to realize this works. Amazing. And Jesus did something through my simple prayer. And my friend is now able to play soccer two days later. Right. That shouldn't be normal. That's not, that's not uh -huh. the way stuff goes. Uh -huh. But it is in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so like just seeing moments like that where your kids are able to latch in, like that's discipleship. Let's not try and make big clout, you know, statements that we're going to disciple nations and you know, have rallies. I don't care how many Unless stadiums. you're doing it at home, you can't do yeah, it anywhere else. I want that stuff, mm -hmm. but not at the price of your kids are neglected and now they're going to possibly yeah. walk away from God. Because you and I have both been around ministries where the children are completely broken. Sure. They've barely got any spiritual resonance. Mm -hmm. They're really not interested in God, but mum and dad are running hard after the gospel. Right. And like that right there, how do you come home from that? To seeing your children in that state like that's so right. devastating now obviously there's redemption and we pray for that oh absolutely and we go after that's like that's the whole point but i don't want to build sandcastles mm -hmm. like, you, you know and even getting to the point later in life where it's time for us to to graduate to heaven you want to be able yeah. to pass that baton on well we named our third child legacy because god was dealing with us a lot at that point in our lives about what's the legacy that we're leaving what wow. is you know because it's all about longevity in the kingdom yes it is it's all about again be fruitful and multiply yes. so it's not just about this generation or what we're doing in this lifetime but it's what's to come so good because it's all about eternity it is and you've written a book yeah about legacy yeah also. we're literally getting ready yeah. actually probably be out by the time we wow. by the time we publish this podcast amazing but yeah, I mean, the whole like, the whole concept is that, you know, I, I, one of the, the stories that we kind of dive in on, and story's not the right word, one of the examples we use historically, biblically, is when you look at Elijah, 
he he creates a spiritual son out of Elisha. Mm-hmm. And there's this powerful seven to ten year relationship where Elisha serves him and he's invited in. And some of it might look right. as simple as like, oh, hey, go figure out where we're living tonight. You know, hey, right. You know, can you help me with my stuff? Or mm-hmm. hey, we're going into town. I need you to help me work with the leadership of the town. And we're going to, you know, and just all of those simple things. Right. But in the midst of that, Elisha is invited to see things Mm -hmm. that just look different than what most people get to see around Elijah. Right. And I've noticed some of the, my own kids, they'll call me later and they'll be, they'll see and hear things and they'll, you think they're not hearing and seeing everything, but they are. Oh my gosh. And they are absorbing things and they're like. They watch everything. They listen to everything. They're listening to everything. Yeah. And the, the, the part that we sometimes don't register with even when we're consciously trying to pay attention mm-hmm. to, we think, oh, the kids are paying attention to that sermon or that mm-hmm. prayer, but they're literally being modeled by the whole picture it's of your so life. It's so true. And so ministry as a family looks like healthy dynamic all the time, mm-hmm. not just when you've got your Sunday best clothes on. No, it's so true. You know, it's They're the always you, watching. Yeah. I remember um, going on, a, this is funny, I remember going on a trip to Europe, we were doing several cities and, um, I remember we were heading to London, England. We were going to be doing ministry there. And then the next stop was going to be, we were going to be down in Greece and take a few days rest. Sounds be- like a good few days rest. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had never been to Greece before, so we're excited about it. And uh, and then after that, we're going to be doing other ministry things. Anyway, we were in the airport traveling to London, and we were talking about what are we going to do in Greece because we didn't really have a plan. So Jan and I were just talking back and forth, and Lincoln was kind of, he was young and he was just sitting there. And we didn't think he was even listening to our conversation. And I remember um, we were talking about what should we do? And I said, maybe we can go see the Acropolis, uh, do some historical sites. And Janet said, I would love to go to the beach. And when she said that, I just said, oh, well, you know, I think it's nude beaches in Greece, right? <laughs> yeah. So I was saying that kind of like, we, I don't think that'd be a place that we should go. Right. Well, anyway, we get picked up by the pastor at this airport. We had never been to this church before. We're driving down the road and the pastor says, where are you going next? And I said, Greece. And he says, what are you going to do in Greece? And Lincoln from the back seat pipes up and goes, we're going to the nude beaches. (laughs) Well, (laughs) they're listening to everything. Everything. I mean, every everything you discuss, whether it's good or whether it's bad, (laughs) they're listening. So that was a little bit of an embarrassing situation. Yeah. And I tried to explain to the pastor we weren't doing that, but I don't think he believed me. I think he he thought Lincoln was didn't yeah, get invited back yeah. exposing us or something <laughs> anyway we didn't get invited back no oh, that was no. that was a one and done but yeah. anyway but the positive thing is you know in our life and ministry as lincoln traveled with us as a young child you know he saw the good the bad the ugly the pause our highs our lows all of that kind of stuff but it all modeled for him yeah. what it looks like to live in the spirit what it looks like to live in the Super glory good. and there's been times we've done things really right. Yeah. And there's been other times we've made, I've made total yeah. mistakes. Yeah. And I've had to, in those times of making mistakes, be, um, be willing enough to repent. Yes. To humble myself. Yes. And Lincoln's seen these things. He's seen yeah. the way that we posture ourselves before the Lord, wanting to live for the Lord. Yeah. And, um, all of that really, it does, it builds something in your family. Hmm. And uh, being willing as a father to say, hey, I blew it. Right. Um, yeah, I've done that with my own kids. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's something I didn't have modeled to me. Mm-hmm. It was very much an iron fist of leadership. And, right. You know, and you sit back and you think to yourself, you know, that really it instills a false image of the heart of God. Mm-hmm. Not that God needs to repent. But that God is, he's, he's reasonable, he's, he's compassionate, he's a good father. And so just seeing how that impacts people's vision or understanding mm-hmm. of God, like one of the things that we've really, I've taken, because a father has such a different, you know, resonating impact on a child than a mother does. It's, yeah. it's a very, two very different contributing roles. And that's why it's important for kids to have both those fathers roles and those mother roles in their life Mm -hmm. and so what i'll do just exactly like what you've said like i'll literally get down on my knees with the kids i'll hold their hands i'll look them straight in the eye and say daddy got it wrong Mm -hmm. and i'm so sorry will you forgive me and i think the power of a child Mm -hmm. because kids don't they don't really understand what that means now 
but later on the power of how that's marked them right where they understand that a father is approachable Mm -hmm. where the father is compassionate and where they haven't just been set in a situation where they can't reason and discuss yeah and i think just the ability of what that does to empower a child to be healthy Mm -hmm. it's huge now take that into ministry where they do see a bad example Mm -hmm. instead of being resentful of ministry we can get down and we can have a conversation say hey that wasn't right what happened right and here's what happened but we walk in love yeah and and it, it, it then graduates them to be able to to be able to deal with things of that nature yeah yeah. And that's so important to keep those communication lines open. Right. That's something that we've always attempted to do with our children is uh, we are approachable for anything. If you make a mistake, come and talk to us. Right. We're not going to hate on you. Yeah. We're not going to shame you. We're not going to guilt trip you. Right. Um, we're not going to say, well, that's great that you did that but we're, we're gonna help you walk through this. Yeah. And we're it's always really here good. to pray for you. I remember when my son was a teenager and he was going through some difficult stuff. And I remember just telling him, Lincoln, you know, I'm always here to pray for you. Yeah. And I want you to know that. Yeah. That whatever you're dealing with, you can always come and talk to me about it. So good. Because you need someone to, like if you're struggling with something, you need someone yeah. who's gonna be a prayer partner with you, right. who's gonna agree with you for that breakthrough. Yes. And, um so good you know in families you have really great times and there's other times and it's difficult it's hard times yeah but through it all um god is there that's so good Mm -hmm. i i think that really is the difference between i i I started uh, going down the road a little earlier in the in our chat but you could see Elijah and Elisha. Now, I think Elijah probably was a bit more of a harsh father figure. He, was, he wasn't necessarily, he's a total man of God, obviously. But you can see the relational, there was relational difficulty there between mm-hmm. him and Elisha. He wasn't necessarily comforting and accommodating. He was more on a mission and Elijah had to fit in with right. that. And I understand that. I think that sometimes painted a dark picture of what people think ministry is supposed to be sure. today. But then you see actually Elisha the way he stewards Gehazi. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily Elisha's fault, but you also see Gehazi has a disconnect there. And there's a a breaking of legacy. Yeah. And so you can see that there's, there's there's, I I always find it interesting that you see about the grave of Elisha, how that man was thrown down into the grave and it's like the anointing didn't have somewhere to go. So it died with Elisha. Wow. And so then it raises this man from the dead. Now, is that the actual theological <laughs> explanation? I don't, I don't know, but I just always have stopped and pondered on that thought. Mm-hmm. And when we're talking family, we're not just talking little helpers or little people and let's have fun. We're actually talking about people that we can pass the baton to. At some Absolutely. point when we can't run anymore, mm-hmm. these these people can be strong family Mm -hmm. like i don't want to have sons and daughters all over the world if my own sons and daughters biologically Mm -hmm. can't enjoy this relationship and this walk with jesus that we carry and so you know it's this whole idea that it's more than just how we function and steward family ministry today it's where this can go long term right and and who it is even after we get to heaven how are they running for god Mm -hmm. by the way they encountered ministry walk Mm -hmm. with jesus in our time right now that opens up a whole other conversation i think even about the way that it looks for your legacy to continue because there's sometimes that i've seen in ministry it's almost like uh ministry families want to create a dynasty do you know what i'm talking about where they put almost the pressure or the demand for what the father has done or the grandfather has done right on the son or on the grandchild and i think i mean you can correct me if i'm wrong about this but my perspective is that in this legacy being passed on because it's a legacy of glory it's a legacy of the anointing and the power of god and and communion with the spirit but it takes on different expressions i think it does and we have to be able to realize that each of our our natural born children they all have their own unique callings yes. and um 
anointings and yes. giftings. Yes. Because when I look at my family, like Legacy, Liberty, and Lincoln, they all are amazingly anointed, but in totally different ways. Different ways, yeah. Uh, my daughter, Liberty, she's our middle child. She has a strong administrative gift. Like, right. it's crazy. I'll be yeah. talking to somebody on the phone and say, hey, uh, let's talk again together in two weeks from today or something. You know, I'll, I'll make a comment like that. And two weeks from that day, Liberty will come to me and say, now, Dad, do you remember you have a phone call with this such and such? If she overheard the conversation, she'll come to me and remind wow. me without writing it down. Yeah. She just... Just a natural gift. It's a natural gift. Right. And my daughter, Legacy, she has a strong faith gift. Wow. I mean, really strong faith gift. Wow. And uh, she's always wanted to put a demand on for healing and miracles and all yes. those kinds of things. And Lincoln, he's... He just has a totally different anointing on him. There's so much favor on him. Yeah. There's so much prosperity on him. Yeah. And each of them look different. And even right now, Lincoln's, you know, he's going to school for sports management and he knows that he's called to the ministry and he knows that he's got an anointing on him for ministry. Right. But I believe the way that God's gonna do ministry through him is a whole lot different than the way that God's done ministry through me. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to be willing to realize that even as the legacy continues, it might not look the same way it looked with us through our children. It will right. be the same Holy Spirit, it'll be the same glory, Right. but it can take on so many different. We need to stop asking David to put on Saul's armor That's and it. let him use his little leather That's sling it. that he's already started forging with God because mm -hmm. God made David different than Saul. Yeah. And I'm not saying one Saul and one's David, but it's a right. picture. So true. I think we've, I think, you know, I can especially say in the Western church and maybe other cultures too, we've, we've become a little too conditioned and maybe even numbed mm -hmm. that ministry is business and we need to right. take care of the family business. It's oh. not the business. Yeah. It's not a business. I can't have my son who's called to be a prophet mm -hmm. have to pretend that he's a, a pastor yeah. So that we can stabilize the family That's finance. It. That's it. Wow. It's about stewarding my father's wow. heart inside the expression of what I was made to. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm literally denying and obstructing identity and function because we're going to be asked to be accountable for what God's called us to do, not what That's my it. father's generation That's it. was working with. It's a calling. It's a calling. It's a calling. It's not a job. What I do is not a job. It's not a business. It's a calling. It's a calling. Jen and I were having this conversation yesterday. I said, I'm amazed by people who they're in ministry and then all of a sudden they say, hey, I'm not in ministry anymore. I'm yeah. I'm doing this business. I'm like, oh. was, was the ministry just a job for you? Because it's never been a job for me. Whether I'm making money doing ministry or not no. wouldn't change what this I'm doing. This is a DNA level thing. Absolutely. You can't switch it off. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about imparting that yeah. legacy to the next generation. It's about the call, giving them their understanding that yes. they are called to the glory, to the anointing. They're called to God and to carry on this, yes. this legacy in whatever expression it looks like. So and it's good. not a family business. Wow. It's not a family business. No. You know, and I, I think we've, we have to really decide, are we serving God or mammon? And I mm -hmm. mean that quite sincerely. Like, is this yeah. about money? And like, yeah. For those of us in ministry, you have to stop and say and ask this question to yourself. Is this about money? Mm -hmm. Have I somehow departed, been distracted or lost the purity of my mm -hmm. first love that said, Jesus, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Right. I'll sleep on a mud floor if I need to. That's it. Whatever it looks like, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Rather than, well, now you've got this empire mm -hmm. and you can't walk away from it because of what it now gives you. Right. Well weren't we supposed to be able to give up anything at any time mm -hmm. because it all belonged to him anyways? Mm -hmm. And how do we, how do we, you know, it's the whole, one of the things in this book, Legacy, that we're, we're launching in the next few weeks is a section where I talk a little bit about nepotism. And, and nepotism from a point of view of, I don't know what that word means. Nepotism really, and that's a good question because it is maybe, that, that's actually a really good. good I've point. heard people say it, but I don't, I, I never so looked it up to see what it nepotism really, means. it's where a family we'll use it in the in the sense of a church just or mm -hmm. a business right a family dynasty or a family established church or business yeah will give a son or a very close person in their inner circle a position because of what that means 
rather than the person that's okay. maybe qualified. Okay, got Does it. Does that make sense? Yep, totally. And so nepotism is an area where either A, thing issues in the family get overlooked because we're sure. under a different, you know, we, we need to look after this right. organization. Yeah. Or someone will ultimately get favor because of a bloodline or an association rather okay. than a qualification. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, there's, sure. there's some peripheral definitions, but yeah. that's kind of it. So we've seen that a lot in church and ministry. It's, it's, pr it's prolific. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're having disconnected generations is because somehow we forgot that the church belongs to Jesus. Hmm. And I think really the way we fix this is coming all the way back to ministry's family. Yeah. But what we do, we don't own. That's we it. are servant caretakers. That's we it. are, I'm like, even, you know, I have some businesses outside of mm -hmm. ministry. Each of those businesses, I am on paper officially for the US government, I am the CEO. Right. But in reality, which spirit overrides reality, sure. the, the, the reality of the natural world. Yeah. In reality, I am a manager. Hmm. And so if Jesus says do this, or write this check, or mm -hmm. go here, or I want you to work on this, then I am receiving instructions from my boss. Right. And so I think we need to bring that into the, the church or into okay. ministry and realize just because I look like I've built this mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's mine. Yeah. And doesn't mean that my children automatically inherit it. Hmm. Now that's going to ruffle some feathers. Sure, I understand that. Sure, but we have to we have to step back and say, uh, am I married to reputation? Am I married to income? Am I married to what I thought was ev that everyone else was doing? So it must be okay for me. Well, no, I'm married. I'm covenanted to a king who paid all for me. Yes. So even because I've built a ministry using his name doesn't mean that it belongs to me. Right. It just means I get to be one of the humble servants that says, mm -hmm. thank you so much, your blood was enough for me. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when children see this, so one of the things I talk about in Legacy, the middle section of the book, we really, we have some difficult conversations. It's gracious, but it's difficult conversations. Sure. And one of the difficult things that I talk about is spiritual sons and daughters that see a side of, of ministry that they should never see, that shouldn't even exist. Right. Like, you know... Um, it's like the Wizard of Oz. You see it, behind the curtain. The, behind the curtain. Uh, yeah. Luxury stores getting shut down and, you mm -hmm. know, $10,000 watches getting purchased and handed out. Mm -hmm. it, like, that's not ministry. That's mm -hmm. something else. That's a completely... Yeah. I've got no problems with nice watches. Sure. Like, I've got no problems with blessing, prosperity. We, we both mm -hmm. know that. But when it's an expected norm, a financial leverage, mm -hmm. or a prestige position, we've lost our soul. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, it's one thing for a father to do that, or someone that claims to be a father, spiritual leader. It's a whole other thing when young people come up and say, if I succeed in ministry, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Is it really? It's like, so sad. Was that actually. ever the case? Mm -hmm. Or was it just the joy of being able to say, Jesus, you gave so mm -hmm. much for me. I was totally lost in sin and the consequence and the, and the lost eternity that would ultimately find me. But you came in your grace and your mercy found me. And it's if all I ever do is get to live my life as an expression in return. Right. As, as, a, as an answer, not, not purchasing, just yeah. as, a, as a response, yeah. then that would be my highest honor. Mm -hmm. But now you've got family and young spiritual sons and daughters that they walk into these environments and they see this opulence mm -hmm. and, a, and a, you know, a Fortune 500 style corporation being yeah. run and it's shifted it's the totally perspective distorted. of where this is going. Yeah. And so we lose legacy there mm -hmm. because we've actually crossed to the other side and we're something else now. Yeah. We just use the same language, but it doesn't mean it's the same thing. Right. And so I think the beautiful part that the one one of the ways that God gets this back, the one of the ways that the modern church finds the purity of the early church is that God causes families to rise. I love that. And he gets it back almost like with our mm -hmm. bodies if we get sick, you don't just go cut an organ out. Mm -hmm. You heal the cells. The cells, at a, from the way it's uh, nurtured and nourished, 
the cells are the things that ultimately will take back the health of the body. Yeah. And the cells of the bride yeah. are families. And that's why I believe there's so much that God's speaking to the church right now about mm -hmm. family. I, I mean, you know, I know we're doing this right now, but there's so many conversations we're, we're hearing all yeah. over the world it's about the God right now. family families in the glory raising yeah. up families healthy families yes. what it looks like to be a ministry family yeah um because god does he wants his children it matters to yeah. god like mm -hmm. i mean the cross really was god trying to get his kids back absolutely he's wanting custody back of his kids mm -hmm. and so if so he good. sees that from us as an everlasting father perspective then he sees us through the filter at a family level, like an earthly family. Yeah. And so, look, I just so value you as a friend, but I value what you stand for and the purity that you you and Janet have walked in. Uh, my wife and I have been so encouraged by you both over the years. Thank you. And, you know, wisdom is justified by her children. Mm -hmm. And I would say a healthy marriage and a healthy ministry is also justified by the children because they, yeah. they rise up. And that doesn't mean that we don't have bumps. That doesn't mean that oh, just we all you do, do this. It, yeah, it doesn't absolutely. mean that you're now some elite perfect person. Mm -mm, and to, just as we get ready to close, I, I would like to just, I'd like to ask you a question mm. because maybe there's someone out there that's done ministry and they've just followed a very popular trend that maybe hasn't looked like what we've talked about. And the, the, they're now looking at maybe some of their children that are really struggling mm -hmm. because this wasn't either model to them or this wasn't the way they did ministry and their children are struggling in life now. Sure. What would you say to the parent in ministry that has children that are really having a tough time, maybe even wanted from the Lord, maybe even disillusioned, mm -hmm. that God could bring a beautiful solution? Well, I think it's something that we already spoke about, being willing to humble ourselves. Mm. And I think um, sometimes the greatest thing you can do is just go to your kids and say, hey, I blew it. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I did the best I knew to do mm -hmm. at the time, but I now realize that, you know, it was a mistake or, yeah. or I, I did some things I shouldn't have done. And yeah. I think sometimes people just need that very basic level of just coming to terms with what it was and being able to repent over it yeah and pray through it yeah and um because it's i think it's when we when we yield ourselves and humble ourselves like that that god is really seen it's so good god is gracious he's he's so kind he's so loving i think sometimes that sincerity mm -hmm. um can just minister so deep so deep and sometimes that's all somebody really needs and of course, you know, with all of that said, just be yielded to the Spirit mm -hmm. and ask Him what it is that you're to do. That's so good. And because I, I know there's so many ministry leaders that do have children that have wandered. Mm -hmm. And I know that also many of those ministry leaders, they, they feel guilt and shame oh, yeah. over maybe what they've done or what they didn't do right. Right. And, um, God wants healing in he families, and does. it's never too late to see a full restoration. You know, we read that scripture about the sons coming back to the fathers and that restoration that will take place. Yep. And we, we hold a vision of that and realize that that's, that's a very real reality that can take place in our day. So good. And so, um, that's so good. yeah, I just encourage anybody who's in that situation just to take steps towards restoration because God does want to restore the family. That's so good. He wants to restore the family, yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. You know, and just just, just, a th just really got a really strong sense when you were saying that right now, like, you know, if you've got adult kids and you've been in ministry and maybe they've paid a price that we all wish that they hadn't paid mm -hmm. and, and there's pain there, there's dysfunction, there's strained relationships, make sure that you, your, your apology or your or your humbling yourself is not just in words. Right. Some of that's got to look like you hanging up ministry for a little bit and carving it's out true. time to take your son fishing. You know, like I've mm -hmm. I've had to counsel some some pastoral families where you can just see the deep pain in the children and adult children looking me in the eyes and saying, "I just want to have a dad that I never had." Right. And so the beautiful part about that is God is a God of redemption 
restoration and, and reconciliation. And, you know, while we can't fix the past and we can't let the devil torment us for the next 20, 30 years of what we got wrong, we can take sincere practical steps. And it doesn't always look like praying around a table, although maybe inviting your adult son to come and pray with you around a table is a good step in the right direction. You know, asking them what they feel like God has told them. But maybe it also looks like taking them fishing or on that trip that you always it's want so to practical. have, or that cruise, you know, and just mm -hmm. putting everything down, putting your phone on silent and not even taking any ministry calls and just say, you know what, son, you know what, daughter, I'm taking this week with you and we're going to do this two, three times a year mm -hmm. because you matter so much to me and we've lost so much time. I don't want to lose any more with you. Right. And if you'll just let me work with you and I'm not trying to buy you off because kids are so sensitive to that, but I really want to sow and build again a lot of love and just let God do something real special in our hearts. And you don't know the power of what that could do to a, a son or daughter's heart where salvation can even come out of right. that. And deep restoration where you turn around and say, you know what, mm -hmm. horrible things, you know, just we had a lot of disadvantage and, and things went wrong, but God has just done such a beautiful work that it's like we never had problems in those areas. And it's an awesome healing. Completely, yeah, just let healing flow, but we have to make time. We have to, we have to structure around that and build mm -hmm. framework and time. So, you know, I firmly believe that while we can actually, we have to talk about difficult things, I firmly believe there is no damage, there's no destruction, there's no devastation that God can't heal like it was never damaged. I believe that too. And and so it just takes though more than just using our words because sometimes in ministry, we will say what we need to say and then we move on and old muscle memory kicks in and it's gonna take an intentional shift because kids mm -hmm. have been watching you your whole life and they know the patterns. And so they're true. looking for an authentication of those words. Mm -hmm. And so we have to actually stop and say, okay, what needs to radically change now? It's like having a health scare. There's certain right. things like, yeah. okay, from now on, that's got to shift. And so I'd say the same is true because ultimately our families have been given to us by God. And I think God's going to go through the inventory of our lives in eternity and say, okay, how did you steward that? How did mm -hmm. you steward that? And one of the first things out of the gate in the heart of God, how did you steward your marriage? How did you steward your children? So this has been wonderful. Wow, it's been powerful. It's okay. what God's doing right now. It is. He's restoring families. It is, and it really is that Malachi 4 thing. He's really focusing on the 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 strands of family, the strands mm -hmm. of, of relationships. So this has been wonderful, guys. Um, check out Joshua Mills' ministry. Uh, he is just a very, very dear friend. And as you can tell, he's just pure in his heart in pursuit of the Lord. So we're going to close right now. Do you want to have a quick prayer over sure. just anyone that just has I'd really resonated with this? Well, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I just thank you that you are the God of restoration, Yes, Jesus. that you are the Lord over our families. And God, I thank you that you are working some really radical miracles right now. Thank you, Jesus. To bring, to bring our children into rightful alignment, to bring our hearts into rightful alignment, that the family might be restored for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Guys, drop a comment below and remember to follow this channel if you haven't already. We will see you on the next podcast.